So on this particular video we are particularly gonna create a word document which has a malicious macro which when enabled will go ahead and download file or payload from the attackers server and go ahead and execute it completely on memory so we will go step by step and look at how can we create such payload and gain a remote access for a particular machine just by executing the payload completely in memory not even touching the disk so these are the following steps that we're gonna take into account first off we are going to create a malicious .ps1 file which will act like a payload now here's the catch this is not the ordinary ordinary .ps1 file right this is not an ordinary payload this payload will completely go ahead and will be executed in memory we will code the VB script in such a way that it will go ahead and execute this particular payload or .ps1 script completely in memory next up the second step we will code a vb macro which will go ahead and download this particular payload okay the dot ps1 payload from our server or attackers server and it will execute it straight into memory okay it won't even touch the disk the payload won't even touch the disk so we are totally avoiding antivirus over here now to make all of that happen we would first need to create an enticing word document that would actually ask the victim to enable macro and execute the shell this won't be so straightforward we will encrypt the word documents content and ask the victim to enable macros in order to decrypt the document and see the original content in that way it would actually lead the victim to go ahead and enable macros which is all we need to actually go ahead and execute the shell so let us go ahead and create everything part by part okay so run.ps1 this is the particular payload that we were talking about let us break the payload down into pieces first off this payload is actually using api calls okay lots of api calls first off we have something called system runtime interrupt services what actually it is system runtime interrupt services this particular API will go ahead and it will manage the interoperation okay between the code and the Windows runtime environment right so this is why we are using system runtime interrupt services next up we have the kernel 32.dll we are actually going ahead and importing this particular DLL what actually it is doing if you know a little bit about kernel 32 what actually kernel 32 is it uh, basically takes care of the memory usage in Microsoft Windows okay just like this okay we are, we are again calling virtual alloc to allocate some memory next up we have something called wait for single object so wait for single object we will discuss it later uh, we need to talk a little bit about this okay this particular byte and this buffer over here what actually it is we are going to go ahead and we are going to replace it with our own buffer so msf venom is actually going to help us do that we will create our own buffer and in the raw ps1 format and we are going to paste it over here so and then kernel 32 once again in virtual alloc yeah and then the system runtime interrupt services next up this particular thing wait for single object what actually is this so wait for single object it gives the code a bit of a time to execute and call back the c2 channel okay uh, and so by c2 channel i mean metas uh, metasploit okay so metasploit is not actually a c2 channel but you can actually go ahead and use it um i don't see a reason why people would use metasploit when they have something like cobalt strike you know but still that's a topic for another day all right so wait for single object it uh, gives this particular code a bit of time time to execute and connect back to us okay next up uh, this particular create threads so, so we are creating a thread we are not creating a process we are creating a thread so even if the uh, parent process dies we will still have our shell so if the microsoft windows dies and it spawns powershell or cmd powershell and cmd will go ahead and live on while the parent process that is word e even exits right so that is what run.ps1 actually is and we will see it in action in the lab All right, so I'm inside the attacker's box. Let me go ahead and open up the terminal and change user to root and open up tmux. I'm going to go ahead and rename this particular pane as RDP. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up another pane and I'm going to go ahead and rename it as MSF console. 
Now let me open up our sub console over here. Now open up another pane and I'm going to rename it, it as tasks because I'm going to carry out carry out all my major tasks over on this particular pane. Now let me go over to documents and let me show you the particular run.ps1 file. So we are going to go ahead and change this particular buffer that we have over here. And MSF Venom is actually going to go ahead and help us with that. Let me go ahead and open up another window where we are going to use MSF Venom and going to generate the particular payload that we need to remove the particular buffer. Here is the particular command that we are going to use. So MSF Venom minus P, okay, Windows. This particular payload is for Windows. Okay, so Windows, Metapreter, Reverse, HTTPS, then our IP address and the port that we are going to listen on. Then I'm going to set the exit function as thread. So thread, what does what does this actually means? If I set it as proce process, the parent process, which actually, uh, you know, spawned the shell. Okay, in, in our case, the Word document, which actually spawned maybe PowerShell or CMD. If the Word document dies, then the shell would die as well. So what we are going to do here is we are going to set it as thread. So even if the parent process dies, we will still have our shell. And then minus F, PS1. So we are going to output the format as raw, PS1 format, so, okay? Now I would go ahead and move over to the MSF console window and I'm going to use exploit multi-handler so I can receive a, you know, a traffic or maybe a particular uh, request from a large amount of IPs. But I, I don't really need that, but still I'm just going to go ahead and use exploit multi-handler, okay? And then I'm going to set the payload as the one that we set in MSF Venom, that is Windows, Metropreter, Reverse, HTTPS. Now I need to see the particular options that I actually need to set. So exit function, L host, L port. Okay, these are the ones that we need to set. L URL, I don't really need it is required. Yeah, it's not required. So exit function, L host and L port is what we need. So let me set them in order. Exit function, then L host and L port. Okay, so exit function. Uh, exit function, we actually set it as thread. So let me use thread over here and let me set the L host as our particular IP or we could just give in the uh, interface, okay? It zero is a particular interface and the L port. So the port that we're going to listen on, that is 443. Let me go ahead and exploit it. So it looks like we are actually listening on a particular port that is 443 right now. So yeah, we are done with this. Okay, so let me go over to the window where I actually used MSF Venom to give us a raw output of the PS1 file. We are going to select this particular buffer and we are going to copy it. And now we will paste it inside our old run.ps1 file. We will open it in VI and we will remove the old buffer and paste our new buffer over here. After we, d we are done, we will just exit out of VI. Now let me go ahead and start the Python HTTP server in port 8888 to host our run.ps1 file. Now I'm going to go ahead and use free RDP to RDP inside the Windows machine. Over on the Windows machine, I have new Microsoft Word document. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Now I'm going to go to file and I'm going to save it and I'm going to specifically save it as Microsoft Word 97 to 2003 format.
after it is saved I'll go ahead and delete the previous file the old file and I'll keep the 97 to 2003 document formatted file now I'll open up the resume as well as the encrypted text both of them at once Now I'm going to go over to the resume and select all by pressing Ctrl A and I'm going to select the text, all of the text and I'm going to go over insert text box and I will select the save selection to text box gallery. Over here I will give the particular name of my company ZDub Technologies that is ZDub Tech and I'm going from the gallery I'm going to select auto text and yeah we are done we are going to go ahead and click OK now that it is done we are going to delete this particular text and copy the encrypted text over on this particular word document okay so the encrypted text has been copied but it doesn't look really good and let us go ahead and edit it a bit to make it more enticing to the victim Okay, so now that the editing is done, we need to add in macros. For that, we will go inside view, macros, and then we will select view macros, and we will give our macros a particular name. I'm going to give it substitute page, and from macros in, I'm going to select the current document, that is the resume document, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, and the page would open where it would code, where it would, you know, paste in your code or write your particular code, right? So I have a particular code already clipped okay already clipped on the clipboard so I'm just going to go ahead and paste it okay so this is the particular code what is this code actually doing so document open right so we got document open function it is as soon as the victim goes ahead and enables okay enables macros enable the macro what would happen is the this particular code okay what would it do it would go ahead and it would change the particular encrypted text okay we just gave in the encrypted text it would go ahead and it would remove the encrypted text and it would substitute it okay substitute that page with the cv okay with the resume that we had given it uh, in earlier right before we pasted it the paste pasted in the encrypted text so that is what, what what's going to happen the encrypted text will be removed and the original document okay the resume would come in in front of the uh, okay the victim and it the victim would uh, you know think like it's it's actually legit that this thing is actually happening as soon as i press enable the uh, code uh, you know the uh, text got uh, decrypted and i have the content right in front of me but that is not the only thing okay that is happening the look at this function substitute page I am also going ahead and downloading okay there is a new object system.net.web client okay so I'm going ahead and downloading run.ps1 from my server okay you can see the IP 10.0.2.4 and the particular port I'm going ahead and downloading run.ps1 and as soon as it is downloaded okay this particular thing won't even touch the disk without even touching the disk it would be executed on the memory and as soon as it is executed we will receive our shell okay so before that we need to look for the get request that this particular IP okay victim machine is making so let's go over to that malicious word file with macros enabled is all ready to go in so let me go ahead and execute it before I do let me go over to my Kali box and let me switch over to the task session and let me see um, let me open up the server okay and let me see all the requests that are coming in and now let me go ahead and open this particular resume
Now, as soon as I've opened it, you will see that there is a security warning that macros have been disabled. So let me go ahead and enable content because this particular Word document is clearly telling us that the content has been decrypted to maintain the privacy of the holder. Please enable mac macros to view the decrypted content. Victim goes ahead and tries to see the uh, decrypted content. Okay, The content is right now encrypted. So as soon as he will cl click and enable uh, you know, ma enable content, it would go ahead and it will show it the particular content, okay, the original content. That's what victim is actually thinking and that is actually going to happen but there's something else that is going to happen as well behind his back. Okay, now uh, if you look over to my Kali box, you would see that a get request comes in, okay, and the IP is the attack uh, victim's IP, right? So victims uh, tries to download the file run.ps1 and the victim tries to execute it. Over to my MSF console session, you will see that a metropolitan session one has been opened. And if I go ahead and write shell, okay, um, inside the CMD now, let me pop up calculator. Okay, so here it is, a calculator opens up. So that's just a basic thing, right? So let me go ahead and let me see all the uh, network status, okay? So netstat, an. So we got UDP connections over here and some of the ports that are actually listening ipv6 port that are actually listening sorry ipv6 addresses with the port that are actually listening all right so yeah let me go ahead and type in sysinfo uh, okay i guess that is not the actual command system info yeah system info let me uh, type in system info So we have got the system info. If we go ahead and feed it to, you know, uh, some of the uh, exploit registers, you know, so they would actually tell us like, how could you actually, uh, what are the actually exploits, uh, the kernel exploits and all the ways you could privilege escalate. So talking about privilege escalation, let me go ahead and type in, uh, see my privileges. So who am I? Slash privs. I guess it is, uh, oh yeah, I, it is priv. Okay, priv, not privs, it's priv. So who am I? Slash priv. Let me see the privileges I hold. Not all of the privileges it would show. Uh, okay, so I hold, uh, you know, something called SH change notification privilege. It, oh, it, it, it's not a lot, but still, yeah. We're able to, yeah, the thing is we got inside the box and that actually is a big thing, right? Just by using macros. So macros, they actually prove a lot helpful in social engineering as well as red teaming assessment. There are lots of techniques out there in the market, right? And this particular technique actually goes ahead and defeats AV to some extent, not all AV, but some particular AVs because it downloads a particular payload and that payload doesn't even touches the disk. It goes ahead and it executes on memory. So yeah, there are lots of techniques out there which you could make use of. And this technique is not actually future proof. You need to go ahead and keep modifying your code because IDS, IPS and AVs, they're getting smarter and they're expanding a lot better and you know, um, so to defeat them you need to you know come up with new techniques and i hope this particular technique would give you some idea okay and would it could give you some idea and would help you in some of your assessments so yeah and i hope uh, you actually learned a new technique today